Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. If you're looking for a podcast about instructional strategies enhanced by technology, you came to the right place. In our conversations, we'll talk to tech experts, share ideas and strategies to help you build your toolbox with tools that you can use in your class immediately. Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. We have special guests today here. I'll look ahead and let you introduce yourself. Um, my name is Casey Holland. I am the instructional coach here at Hannahan Middle School. My name is Alexis Brock, and I'm a sixth grade science teacher. Absolutely, I hear Hannahan Middle School. So we are on location here for the uh, Innovation Squadcast. Pretty excited about that. We've got new microphones too, so you guys are kind of the first ones to <laughs> see how that's going to work. So hopefully the audio is coming through wonderfully and, and we get some better crisper audio out of this. So um, one thing we all have in common, we are all Winthrop Eagles. Yes, we yeah, are. yeah. So I thought that was really we had that instant kind of eagle connection. So that's um, right. yeah. So I thought that was really cool that you know we were all went through eagles and uh, and I came in you know and, and got to see some some amazing things going on here. I was like, well, we got to talk to um, talk to these teachers and and you know highlight some of the wonderful things going on here at Hanahan Middle. So um, and so kind of where we like to get started is with Alexis and um, and kind of you know, saw that last project that you guys were working on when it came to the animal biomes and everything like that. So kind of talk a little bit about like what it went into that and um, and how, how you felt it went, so. So yes, so every year I do the animal unit and I normally have my kids create a brand new animal nice. and they use Switch Zoo, which is a website and the students can integrate like two different animals and they can actually see it with the head, the body, the tails. And so this year with STEAM, I figured we could add more components to it. So they actually, the students were able to work in groups and I based it on a new zoo in Charleston and they had to pick a habitat that interests them. And then within that habitat, they had to find a new animal and they had to figure out how they that animal was willing to survive, the size of the habitat. And then the final project was to make a presentation and to build a 3D model of their animal and their habitat. That's awesome. Yeah, and I actually used Switch Zoo when I went to another school because they were looking at doing some animal project. I'm like, yeah, I just saw this great thing that this yeah. other teacher was doing, so <laughs> awesome. um, and passed it down. Um, you know, as an instructional coach, what kind of what, how did you help kind of help facilitate that and um, and what's your role in that? Yeah, so Alexis and I met a couple of times and kind of planned out um, her unit. And um, I was there to support some of the ideas and how to bring in some different contents. And then um, also helping to reach out to some experts. We had um, a zookeeper from B City oh, that awesome. yeah. did a, a Zoom call with or a Google Meet with us. And um, they're actually developing a new um, part right. of yeah. the B City. They're having, they're, um, going to have a safari that opens in the next couple of months. So nice. she was able to tell us about the things that they consider when they are developing a new habitat for their animals. And the kids were able to ask questions and things like that. So it was really, um, that was a neat part of the project Absolutely. that I, I felt like I was able to to help with, to support. Yeah. My daughter loves Bee City because mm -hmm. you get to interact with the animals more. And so she's real excited about the yeah. safari yeah. thing. So. Well, and I actually never been to Bee City. So yeah. I went, um, last weekend or the weekend before right. after we had the google meet with the lady from b city and it's amazing there and the mm -hmm. kids really were very engaged with that that phone call mm -hmm. so you've talked about the kind of the steam project and and so to kind of go through like how's that going for your school and, and what's the process like if other schools maybe want to do the is it called it's accreditation is that what it's called like a um, steam accreditation uh, or endorsement, endorsement yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah we're we're both going through the steam um cohort that is working towards the endorsement okay so we've been doing it for three years now i think, okay. I think um, so. prior to covid we started with um year one just dipping our feet in and we did um a great project then and um we just wanted to continue because of the the authentic aspect of it right. you know the the real life um problems and the the kids one thing that we saw that was very interesting is those those gt kids that just want to know what do i need to do to get 100 here yeah. give me my checklist <laughs> and they do they don't have that with these kind of types of projects and i think it makes them think outside of the box which is um new for some of them and it's kind of difficult but um but they really learn a lot through these types of projects Absolutely. i think i think so especially with this last one a couple of the kids they've never done a steam unit before so going into this one time management was something that they definitely had to Absolutely, figure out yeah. and they learned that 
you know, waiting till the last possible minute to do presentations and do a video was not maybe the best thing. And so they were scrounging around to try to finish right before right. the final presentation. This brings it back to the Berkeley County work yeah. and life skills. I mean, these are all the work and life skills that they need. And that's one of the great things about STEAM projects or project based learning or anything mm -hmm. where the students are having to create. There's a lot of other work and life skills that come into that. And you can tie it right to whatever standards you've got and, uh, and get mm -hmm. those work and life skills. So what I also liked is that you provided choice. Right. And that's, I thought that was something that um, another thing I think we all have in common. We're all PL, uh, yes. personalized learning, uh, gradual. Well, you're working at the I'm, course, right? Yeah. I'm in it currently. Yeah. And then yep. y'all have already I have mine. Yep. Were yep. I, took, yeah, I took it in 2019. Yep. We took yep. it together. Yep. So, yep. Yep. so another thing we all had in common was personalized mm -hmm. learning. So I guess, you know, yeah, providing that choice to kind of, you know, when students have choice, what do you see as one of the big kind of advantages to that? I think they're more engaged. I mean, going through that personalized learning course like two years ago, I really saw a difference, even with my own levels, giving my own level students like that choice. They were more engaged. They were more willing to put forth the effort that was needed to actually learn the content and they were able to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. So every year I do like a choice board with them within the animal unit. Right. So yeah, it's been good. What have you what have you kind of taken from the personalized learning course yet when it comes to choice and um and i totally see where you're going to get more student buy-in mm -hmm. where they're going right. to see the value of what it is that they're learning and like you said they're definitely going to be more engaged because you're giving you know you're finding out who they are as a learner and then targeting some of your instruction or your engagement activities towards who they are so that they will be um, more engaged, they'll learn more. Um, I think, you know, giving them them choice and um, is just pivotal in, you know, just just making their learning just grow astronomically. I think it, it's great. And what did some of the students choose when it came to their projects? Like what you remember some of the examples? Um, so they're so used to Google Slides. Yes. And mm -hmm. so they always every year that I've done since the personalized learning course and I've given them choice. They like websites. Google site, I think, is yep. easier for them. But when it come, came time to this presentation or this project with Steam, a lot of them chose the video and they chose the Google site. And then with um, really just with all the projects and choice, they really have gone towards the video. Right. Which mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, my kids that wasn't even something that they were interested in. Right. They were afraid. What did they use to record? Um, they've used Screencastify. Castify, yeah. They also That's just the did it through their Chromebook. Absolutely. Um, so. But you also saw in the creation though, we had um, we had student using SketchUp to yes. build the, one of the things we saw. And then it wasn't all just technology, right? So what other kind mm -hmm. of like maker stuff did you provide for the help with that? So, so there was a lot of um, the 3D modeling. Mm -hmm. There was right. a lot of play-doh and modeling clay and popsicle sticks and pipe cleaners and hot glue like yes yeah. a, lot of, a lot of hot glue a lot of hot glue yeah yeah so and then i mean they they turned out to be beautiful there were water you know water habitats where they were doing a river or an ocean and then there were other habitats that were you know um the tundra where they you know it was snow and they were able to use a lot of you know different things to create right. their 3d model which was interesting yeah those were really some of them are so beautifully put together and painted and um yeah so they were really really impressive and i think that's what what i've always seen when when i've you know, provided any kind of project base with choice is that they ended up doing a little bit more than even I would have maybe put if I put some restrictions on there or maybe not mm -hmm. given choice. Did you kind of feel that way too? That they went a little above and beyond it sometimes? Oh, yes. Oh, I yeah. yeah, I definitely saw that with a couple of the groups. They, I mean, they came in the next day with their model and I'm like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it was just surprising to me right. that they went way ab above what I was expecting. Right. And then you helped with some green screen videos. Yes. And, and they were editing and, yep. from, from the app. They were editing those, putting them together. We had um, a couple that did different backgrounds so they had to like slice it and put it all together. They were doing more than what I could do on that app for <laughs> yeah. sure. I was like, I don't know how to do this, but they were able to figure Absolutely. it out. Absolutely. And then you could kind of also see the passion in that they were doing it outside of even their class time. Like mm -hmm. they were like, I'm going to come in and lunch tomorrow and yes. do this. Right. Yes. And so that's where that, you know, kind of 
choice and, and project where they get passionate about something that they're creating that now mm -hmm. that they're going to be even wanting to work on it outside of that. And that's where that flexible learning and time comes in. Mm -hmm. That's so crucial because you had kids coming in during all times, right? Working Absolutely. on the stuff. Yeah. 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 That's great that you have the maker space here being able to provide all that mm -hmm. and do all that. So um, what other things you got coming up this next? Do you, you got the next thing in the works? Um, so in a couple of weeks, we actually will be doing our plant um, steam unit. Okay. And so we're going to be focusing on the greenhouse. The greenhouse. Yes. You gonna, do you have a greenhouse here? We, we do. do. No way. Yes. Yes. But it is in pretty sad shape. It okay. Is, <laughs> yeah. It is not in the best shape. Okay. So, so the, are yeah. the kids going to have to rebuild it and fix it? They're going to have, I think we decided we're going to have them what design they can do, it yeah. okay. to like use the, the math part of it yeah. to design like nice. what they're going to put where okay. so that they can use the the space efficiently right and then um and then you know we do have a little bit of money we're gonna I, we've already brainstormed some some experts that we can have that we'll we'll oh, talk yeah. to them about like which plants because that brings in the science content like what the plants need to survive and which plants are going to grow well here right. in charleston south carolina you know definitely so when you're i think that's something that I think as educators, sometimes we forget about or that the experts that are out there, like, have you have you found that they like they want to talk to us, they really so kind of go through the process of how you, you've been, you know, contacting experts, because other, you know, teachers may want to do that same thing That's something we don't, I think, sometimes think about, but it's actually a very easy process. Yeah. And I think um, the the fact that we've been virtual and we know how to use Google Meet and right. Zoom a lot more makes it a lot easier, too, because, you know, um, when I contacted the city, I I don't think they've had that contact a lot right. and um because she was asking questions she was like okay how are we going to do this and but i just reached out and with a phone call and they called me right back and they were like this sounds amazing i wish i was in sixth grade again so that <laughs> i could do this project right and then the zookeeper um she was a young young lady and she was so good at talking to the students and um she she gave them some background and then just asked do you have any questions? And the students right. were able to ask questions, but all it took was a simple phone call. Absolutely. Yeah. What experts you got lined up for the plant? Do you, or you got some so phone for the calls out? <laughs> for the plant, you know, I haven't made the phone calls okay. yet. Um, we still are planning that, but um, a student that I taught a couple of years ago, his mom owns two like stores, one, okay. in, one in Goose Creek and one in Summer, nice. Somerville that are plant stores. Okay. That's what she does. So I thought about reaching out to her Absolutely. and um, my sister-in-law actually has a garden center. Okay. She's in the upstate of South Carolina, well, but with Zoom sure. and Google Meet, we can easily have her. And she used to be a teacher, so she's very interested in yeah. this. And she said she would be happy to to help. So we'll uh, hopefully be able to get some of those. Um, and and you had a friend too that was yeah. Um, I had someone that I went to college with that she focuses on, a lot on plants, and so I mm -hmm. could always reach out to her as nice. well to. So when you're like, do you guys spend some time prepping with the kids and talking about like that conversation or is it kind of just um, you let them do whatever? So with this last one, I just had the kids in their groups um, come up with some questions okay, good. just yeah. as a base. But with the last one, um, the zookeeper pretty much kind of guided the conversation. She okay. just kind of explained what went in the mm -hmm. planning and all preparation for a new exhibit. And then after that, the kids were able to ask questions based on what she actually yeah. said. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a little bit fluid, but it, with some preparation and research yeah. goes in yeah. to make sure that they're yeah. asking the right stuff. Right. Yeah. A couple of years ago when we did our, um, our unit on the population, you know, in Hanahan and how right. much it's growing and we're running out of space and, and everything we did, our ELA teacher worked very closely and she had them, she prepped them with their speaking, um, like how are they going right. to ask these questions? And she had them like practice it Absolutely. with her first. Um, so hopefully we will be able to bring in some of those ELA standards with the, the speaking and everything so that they can also, you know, and just bring it all together right. like steam is meant to be exactly now have you seen kind of the that the project based stuff start to spread out a little bit because i know i was in the makerspace the other room and i saw some other teachers getting involved so um we have some teachers that are that are on board with yeah. the the whole um steam problem based you know yeah. project based learning um uh, we had an eighth grade class this week that was working on um like a shark tank yes. um, where they have yeah. to develop a new invention um, he, he's a social studies teacher, but he worked it in because of the interchangeable parts. And, you know, um, when he was talking about inventions, so right. they're inventing a project, a, a, 
and coming up with something and then they had to recreate a prototype. So nice. they've been in the makerspace all week this week, yep. creating those prototypes with all kinds of materials, right. including the laser cutter or, um, you know, the lots of popsicle sticks and again, lots yeah. of hot glue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then next week they're going to present it just like if they were on shark tank with the whole business nice. plan and everything. Who so, are they presenting it to? Um, Mr. Heckman is going to have, um, so he, he's asked me co to come in a nice. day. He yeah. was going to see about some ad administrators oh, yeah, coming that's... in. That was one thing that Alexis did as well was, um, when her kids were mm -hmm. presenting instead of just doing it in their classroom we just did a simple switch to the multi-purpose room and they got to get up on the stage nice. and just that little bit of making right. their learning public i think made a difference because absolutely we were at one point we were like just just stay down on the on the floor and they were like no can we <laughs> please go get up on the stage we'll talk loud i promise okay. so just being up on right. the stage made a difference it, it just felt like they were making it public did you invite anybody else in or yes okay. so um actually with my last two classes of the day our eighth grade teachers have planning. Okay. So I reached out to them. I'm like, if you have any free time, you know, on that day and you want to come by and just be like an audience because the kids are with their classmates all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually giving them a new audience, it mm -hmm. made it even more special. They were really excited. Actually, mm -hmm. um, when we first got in there, I'm like, I thought eighth grade teachers were coming <laughs> in. And I'm right. like, they will be here. And yeah. then once, you know, the teacher came in, it was Right. A whole new or like, inv excitement. Invite some classes in next time. That yeah, would really were, kick so it up a notch. Actually, with my last class, one of the rewards that we gave with my homeroom, um, once they got done with their assignment in their social studies mm -hmm. class, they were actually able to come in mm -hmm. and watch nice, their fellow nice. peers present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which made it special. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Bringing in those other classes would be mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. that changes the whole dynamic because when the kids know that other people are going to be watching, that changes well, things and, big time. And two years ago, or whenever we did the overcrowding and all mm -hmm. we actually did it with all four of our classes and it was all four teachers on our team that were mm -hmm. involved and so we had all of them in yeah so yeah. they were able to were you able to share anything back with the expert at all i think that'd be also a nice thing to do is kind yeah. of bring them in at some point and um you know just yeah. to see what how they're contributing to the education is, is be, be important so yeah and we we did a, a post on facebook and and okay. tagged them and okay. thank them for um for lending you know the helping hand absolutely yeah yeah i wish i would have done more of the experts in my class i didn't ever reach out but mm -hmm. i just never never think you know sometimes i didn't think especially with the history that we have here in charleston sometimes yeah. you know as a history teacher i always forget about that but there's mm -hmm. so many people that are willing to help out and um and help these kids so that's that's a really cool thing that you yeah. guys are doing so yeah a couple when we did the two years ago when we did the um the steam unit on the population in hanahan yeah. we had the mayor of hanahan came in nice. like and that was pre-COVID so we yeah. could have visitors like in person yeah and all the kids were in the multi-purpose room we had and it was when um when Mr. Sanders I mean yeah um when Dion was still um over transportation and right. that was one of the big concerns is buses because yeah. they were buses mm -hmm. were overcrowded and he came in and he talked to them and yeah. they were like well we just need more buses and he was able to tell them you yeah, know yeah. it's not about the buses it's about the bus drivers right. and then it, it kind of switched their whole project because it wasn't about raising money to get buses now it right. was about how do we get better pay for our bus drivers and things like that. So Absolutely. that problem solving came from the expert, you know, so I think that was really cool. And I think also with like the bus drivers, it really, um, the kids even had to really deal with like the financial side of it. So what they thought was a lot of money to them in the real world actually wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so they had to think of ways to like promote it and like advertise and make it better yeah they were like we'll sell world's finest chocolate candy yeah <laughs> yeah we we're like okay let's think about this how real many, world how many candy bars are we gonna have to sell for a bus yeah <laughs> or a bus driver's salary right. yes that's a lot yeah, of candy I don't bars think that's a lot of candy bars yeah. They're yeah. good though, but I don't think it could sell that many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, anything else that you guys can um, want to share? Um, I would just say, like teachers in Berkeley County out there, you know, take take advantage of these um, opportunities that are given the the STEAM classes that are offered and the personalized learning classes. Absolutely. You know, it, it's it's really 
it can change your mindset it about does, teaching. Yeah. I know yeah. the PL course changed mine a big time from, you know, okay. I, I've always did a lot of projects and did some mm -hmm. innovation stuff, but it really focuses in what what becomes important and that's making everything student centered and students doing the work because the mm -hmm. one doing is the one learning. And so, um, you know, I, I, that PL course was absolutely instrumental in, in changing my philosophy. I know it was probably for you as well. It yeah. was. And I think the biggest thing for me, which is one reason why I was so invested in it from the start was coming right out of college, like winter really was all about hands on. Right. And so even going through my college courses, the way that I learned growing up, I realize, you know, what actually helps the kids learn and be more engaged and all. And so it wasn't so much like book work. It was more hands-on problem-based. Mm -hmm. And so it really has changed the way I see yeah. teaching. Absolutely. And you can see it with your kids and you can mm -hmm. see it in your projects. And um, I really appreciate you guys being here and talking to us um, on this uh, podcast. And um, and so I kind of leave it with like a question of the day. I think today's question would be like, if, you know, maybe have the people that are watching think about what expert could they pull in to help build a project or maybe what unit could they turn into a project? So, um, you know, leave us a message um, and tell us all about what uh, projects or what experts you or have you've used as well. So maybe we can, you know, build a little resource center of, of experts to come and, yeah. and help benefit uh, educators of Berkeley County. Great idea. Alrighty. All right. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye.